what we're trying to avoid with this is what, what NASA calls a single point failure. You get one failure, you get, you know, and you've lost the system. And you want, this is very highly, what they call highly redundant and robust because of that. So this shows you can, you know, slope floor depends upon the slope of the floor and the distance traveled per hundred, um, 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 per hundred jumps. So uh, clearly uh, for a high slope, you know, but the lava tubes really don't have very high slopes on the floor because they just ran over the surface for long distances. They weren't going down. You wouldn't go down on the side of the volcano. You'd go in where it hit the flats and went way out long distances. Um, especially in the low gravity of Mars they w and Moon, they would flow much longer and carry uh, much further down. Okay. Um, <coughs> just an interesting <coughs> picture. This shows some of our balls. This is this is a cave um, in New Mexico. Um, you can see, you can look directly into the. This is a skylight where the cave has roof has collapsed, giving you a good access into the cave. Yeah. Do you recall specifically which one that is? No, I don't. It was. So I think it's the same one. No, we went. Went there. No, no, we it, this is about a four mile walk in from the from the parking lot and it's you have to walk across a giant lava field and it's up near the continental divide that's what I remember going in there was that's me okay and that's one of my postdocs and those are our little balls in there um, did you go in with a guy yeah yeah these two over here what no just crawled in no, I meant to find to find the cave. It was, it was pretty dangerous in there to getting lost and. <coughs> hmm? <laughs> you had a portable GPS with you? No. Can't tell you where you were. Okay. Good. I'm glad you got out. Um. I found it a very challenging. It was a very challenging hike in there. You're walking across the. Poo Poo Rock and the Mai Mai Rock, I forget what they call those lava fields, and it's really tough, even with, even with good hiking boots. And um, But they told, you know, our guides said, don't go in, you know, cave, cave, don't go in there without redundant lights and teams and stuff like that. Um, but, what? Pahoya Hoya and Ah Ah. Ah Ah, yeah, Ha Ha, ooh, Pahoya Hoya. Um, other uses for it, you know, which is really cool. You'll recognize that as the World Trade Center, and you won't recognize that. That's a, you know, lots of ca mine um, collapsing. So the fact is, with NASA projects, we always have to talk, well, we talk about it because it's a really good idea, about dual use, that the technology we're developing will have use for <coughs> civilian and other applications. So certain search and rescue uh, missions and um, um, uh, search and particular search and rescue missions and also exploration. Why don't you want to go down caves and sniff around and see if there was some maybe some bad guy sitting down there, or maybe send your balls in and have them sit there over long periods of time and wait for somebody to come by who's not supposed to be in that part of Tora Bora or whatever it's called. Right? Uh, yeah. Clinton said he looked, couldn't find him, so he's probably not there anymore. Anyway, so George didn't even try, right? Anyway, so you can imagine, you know, in, in terms of robotic approaches required for search and rescue, natural disasters, earthquakes and things, and terrorist acts, and search for hidden chemical and biological threats, very low cost, very sacrificial. When we've shown this kind of thing to... Um, for what's called first responders, meaning the people who do that kind of thing, and like you, most of them are firemen, and, you know, and special fire rescue teams. Um, and you, add, they ask you what these might cost, and you know, in mass, they, they can be very simple and low cost, and you, you don't have a good idea, but you know, and you can't even quote dollars to them and just say, well, each one was probably be less than a chainsaw, and they go, oh, okay, that'll be good, you know. <laughs> Firemen, we learned out. Fire rescue people think in terms of chainsaws. How many chainsaws <laughs> would it take? Um, so, um, getting back to space, is we believe this is a new design paradigm for exploration of planets, 
the moons and the other bodies of the solar system, and we believe they can go where no robot has gone before. <laughs> Uh, these devices w would be self-directing. The, 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 right. the, the, they would go out and look around on themselves, on their own, and not be home, home controlled. Well, they might be controlled by some center, central um, agency, such as an orbiter or landing pod, that might, in fact, interpret inf communications information coming back from others and direct, say, "Hey, I found something really interesting in this area," and have them move in that direction. Um, as a team. So there would be some higher level intelligence. I don't think any particular ball uh, or robot would have a high degree of intelligence, but combined with a central authority of some sort and a, what we call distributed intelligence, that you could, you could have a system that was adaptable to the needs of the mission and able to accommodate unexpected activities. That's the hard part about exploration. You don't know what you're going to find. If you do know what you're going to find, you shouldn't be exploring it. You don't need to explore there. <laughs> right. Ooh. Any other? Yeah. Um, how, how have you thought about how they would see? Could you have a camera inside yeah. one that would look out through a clear right. spot or something? Right. Well, that that's what we, we pointed out about the panoramic imaging. Whether or not you could, you you probably could see in all directions. What typically you do? I mean, one of the one of the things you do is in the top of the ball, you put a cone, an optical cone, a mirror that's circular with a point on it, and you have a sensor that looks up. It can see in 360 degrees all the way around. So you can, you can see what's, what's happening, whether or not you do things like put um, particular light-emitting diodes on the system of a particular frequency so that other systems could see each other in moving through caves, for example, would be an interesting attribute. So a lot of interesting things can be done. It's a, it's a very, we believe it's a very flexible kind of exploration technology that would be cool to work with. Yeah? So what was the range you were saying that you would get out of this, the expected range of exploration? Oh. The, the range seems to be, I, I hate to say this, but it's, I, I won't say it's unlimited, but it's really long. In other words, the calculations which we've done, which I didn't say, is w when you trade fuel, range is only related to fuel, how much right, fuel you right. can carry. And so you've got some trade-offs there about weight and this complicated issue. But 10,000 hops is not a big deal. For these, using just a few grams of oxygen. So you're looking about if, if you were linear hops and it went straight. <coughs> if you went straight, and we're, we're looking, <coughs> we're estimating that you'd get between one and two meters per hop. Right. If you got some roll on it, so you're talking about 20, 15,000 meters, 15 kilometers. you no problem. You know, it depends. If you trade off sensors for. Um, <coughs> for um, <coughs> See, so our, our reference, if you trade off sensors, you'd go much further. Our reference mission was 50 square miles. So, so what's the, what do you think that the, uh, compare that to our single robot explorers, single robot explorers that we're doing today, in terms of cost versus area of exploration? And you can't quantify that at all? I, I don't think it's a, a fair comparison. <coughs> the reason is, that when you look at MSL, yeah. Mars <coughs> Mobile Science Lab, it's going to go up in 2009. We're working on that. I mean, that is a system the size of the golf cart that was rolling around out there. <coughs> the instruments it can carry are just incredible. And its ability to do it, it's going to be nuclear powered. Um, everybody know that? It's going to have a small thermonuclear reactor on it.